Good morning or good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another Paperless Lunch and Learn webinar. Today's webinar will be discussing what is a manufacturing execution system, or otherwise known as an MES system. We chose this topic today because either it's confusion or maybe just understanding, but a lot of our interaction with uh, our customers in manufacturing, when we ask the question, what is an MES system, not a lot of people know what an MES system is or can define all the pieces and uh, puzzles that go into an MES system. So let's start out with today with a, a quick definition of what an MES system is. Why is it important to me? How does it play with all the other systems within my business? And then what are the advantages and core functions of, the, of an MES system? And then Paperless uh, will show you its MES system and how it can actually help accommodate or accomplish some of the core functions as well as benefits of an MES system. So getting into it here, if you look at a manufacturing execution system, you know, there's really three kind of things it's trying to convey. Is it connects, it monitors, and it controls pretty much anything that goes on on the manufacturing floor from a data perspective, you know, from a users or machines, et cetera. And then you think about the main goal of a manufacturing execution system, and it's really to improve your bottom line, improve improve your production output out there on the shop floor. If we look at some like industry standards out there, there's a company out there called IDC, which is kind of like Gartner, uh, which its purpose is to go and uh, evaluate systems and give an output of, you know, where does that system play? Is it a value system to your business, et cetera? The definition from IDC for what a manufacturing execution system, it comes in three formats. There's a top-down version, which is really just ERP-centric. It focuses on your ERP data and the needs of ERP, and it's pretty much one-directional. Then the second category that they put MES into is the bottom-up category, which is mach machine-centric, which is looking at your speeds and feeds of your machines as far as you know what's going into it, you know what's the temperature, how many pieces are being reported, um, et cetera. And then the third category that it applies to MES is this inside out, which is really based on the worker-centric version of MES, which is going to provide visibility for what needs to be worked on from an ERP perspective out there on the shop floor. It's going to communicate down and up from the bottom-up version, which is your machines out there on the floor. And it's really focused on that user and that two-way communication. And paperless MES, is that's where it fits. It fits in that inside out version. We're really focused on the workers out in the shop floor, making it simple for them to get information for what they should be manufacturing today, as well as making it simple for them to report all the activities that they're doing throughout the day that other areas of your business can take advantage of. Looking at MES, now where does it fit with other systems? How does it play with other systems, right? And you have that machine layer down below, which is your SCADA stuff, where it's like a wonderware, et etc., and it's actually communicating to the machines. Then you have MES, and then in the middle with ERP and your business intelligence up on top. And you think about that, MES is a critical part of your solution here because it communicates both between your upper level business intelligence and ERP, as well as your bottom level, your machines out there on the shop floor. You think about it from a more granular detail and say, let's expand this a little bit further. And you look at this chart here, and obviously you've got the design, plan, respond, produce, and everything else on there. But it also shows MES out here, and it also shows your machine layer as well as your ERP layer. And if you think about the data that's flowing between all these layers, MES, that's where it comes into play. It's that critical piece in the middle that says, I'm going to communicate down and up the chain not only to machines but also to workers out there on the shop floor all the pertinent information as far as what you need to manufacture but also what has been done so that my other business applications can take advantage of that real-time and accurate information to make better business decisions let's get into the core functions and features of an MES so you think about obviously who, what, when, where, how, right? Those kind of things are all my core functions. And it can be broken down to just like, you know what, when do I need to work on something? What am I supposed to manufacture? How am I supposed to manufacture that? Who is actually responsible for this? What work area, what, work area, what tools, what people, et cetera? And then obviously, you know, how did we actually do kind of a monitoring kind of perspective? Kind of expanding this into say like all the different features or functions of an MES system 
Okay, and we've broken down to uh, these categories here. We have data collection and obviously acquisition, um, which is just saying, I want to know what's going on out there on the shop floor. I want to collect information for what's being processed, what's being worked on. Operation scheduling looking at a schedule for what should be manufactured out there on the shop floor. Are you thinking about a schedule, whether that comes from an ERP system or an outside source, everybody has a schedule for what should be manufactured on the floor, and it even can be broken down into more detailed information as far as what work areas um, are presented with the schedules at that individual station. And that's an important piece, because you have to obviously work on the right things at the right time in order to actually you know, produce parts on time. Dispatching production units. Obviously, uh, you know, a production unit could be in the form of a finished good, it could be a form of a sub-assembly, it could be a form of raw material. But you're dispatching those production units out to the shop floor, again, in this sequence, um, as well as reporting what was done against each one of those production units. Uh, production tracking and genealogy is just one kind of indicator of uh, tracking can be expanded into many different things you could track movement as far as where it is in the process, you could track status, you could track who's working on it, you can track what inventory went into it, what inventory came out of it. Um, you can get down to a very granular level where you're looking at gene genealogy, which is looking at maybe the batch lot information for components that went into an end item that was batch lot controlled as well. Or you can even go one la layer lower and go to the serial number, which is a unique identity against the parts that you're manufacturing, as well as the parts that you're putting into that serialized end item. So those things are very, very important. Uh, staff and resource management. Obviously, you want to know who's in the building, uh, who's scheduled to work on what work center, um, you know, are there skills for those workers for particular machines or particular jobs, et cetera. But you want to understand not only who's here and what they're working on, but also how well they're doing. You know, am I actually going ahead or behind schedule on the jobs that is in front of me at my workstation? Process management. You expand process manage a management a little bit. You're thinking about how should something be manufactured. And you want to communicate that. Obviously, you think about engineers and putting together a design of a product and the manufacturing steps that it has to go through in order to manufacture it. That's the process. And you want to control the management of that process. If you're looking at performance analysis, uh, performance analysis can be broken down into, you know, how well is this job performing, whether that's the actual machine, whether that's the employee, whether that's the job itself. There's a lot of factors that go into performance analysis and being able to actually look and dive into uh, details for each one of those areas for how well it's doing can lead to some huge benefits within any manufacturing company. Performance analysis. <clears throat> uh, I, actually, I, I, I talked about that one. I apologize. <laughs> but then we get into like maintenance management, quality management, and document management. Um, the, just the management of you know maintenance for machines, quality against a job, against a machine, against a uh, component or a subassembled item or a finished item, and then document management, all the supporting information that needs to be communicated to and from the shop floor. You know, again, think about an MES solution and think about these core functions and features. You know, it's not just tracking information for what happened out there on the shop floor. It's also retrieving information and um, also communicating information out there to the shop floor and all the other business applications. Let's take a look quickly at a brief workflow. Obviously, you think about planners and engineers on the side there, right? Uh, engineer uh, and designer is going to actually tell you what routing steps, uh, how does this item get assembled, um, just to whatever details you want to go down. Planners are obviously in place to say, you know what, I, here's what I have on the schedule, here's my current workload, and this could be either in an automated for format, meaning a software application does the bulk of your planning, and then maybe you have a planner uh, above that just to review and tweak that plan that was created by your software application. But the, all that information then goes into your MES application, right? And then that in turn is obviously data, and data gets then communicated out to the pr production floor, and it can go out to a shift supervisor 
which can further tweak that plan if you give them the authority and, and responsibility to say, you know what, I know based on my information out on the floor of this job cannot run now because I don't have the people, I don't have the resources as far as material or that machine is actually running slower so I cannot work that, I need to actually change things up. Or maybe they're even going in a more granular level saying that it makes more sense to run these two jobs back to back because they have similar setup times or setup uh, setups, and I'm going to reduce my overall setup time if I actually run these two jobs back to back. So that's the production information that can be communicated out to the shop floor to the supervisors. And then the operators on the floor, they're obviously going to manufacture things, right? They're going to actually look at the individual tasks that need to be done at the individual work centers. They're going to look at the parts that are needed, the um, process as far as how do I assemble something, how do I manufacture something, etc. And they're ultimately going to produce a product. And that product could be a, again, self-assembled item, or it could be a finished item, or it could just be a work in process step. And then we get into my last little thing here, which is looking at inspection or quality tests. Um, and that's why I look at that work in process as a component, if you will, or, or a step of the manufacturing process that needs to be tested. Because you may want to test in process uh, things rather than just testing the end item at the, at the end of the line. So all, these in, all this information here from operators and quality inspectors and machines as well can obviously go back into that MES system as updating what is currently going on, on out in the shop floor and then communicate that. Not only communicate that to its MES application, but also communicate that to all your other business applications. You think about your planning engine, you think about your purchasing engine as far as what to buy, what to manufacture, et cetera. All those individual applications in your business are updated based on that information that's coming from your shop floor. And with that information, then you can be better tooled in order to make better business decisions. Let's get into now why is an MES important. You know, and two key factors really are making sure you have accurate and uh, real-time information that's visible to everybody. So it's really giving manufacturers that real-time, accurate, and visible information to everybody. And I kind of spoke about this a little bit already, but I want to make sure that that hits home because that's the important. I mean, you're looking at software systems out there on the floor, and why do I implement them, right? Am I implement them just to capture and collect data? that is maybe used or not used. If it's not used, then why collect it? Um, but you really want to use this MES information to further improve your business. You know, when's the machine down? How much scrap have I had? What my quality issues are? Am I running per uh, schedule, et cetera? So let's dive in a little deeper here. You know, think about MES and how it optimizes uh, the production uh, out there on the floor. It's really uh, helping production on the floor by having everybody up to date with that real time information. You know, it's current conditions. Obviously, you know, key indicators uh, on stack lights are red and green and yellow, right? Obviously, red means it's, something's wrong, green means something's good, yellow means I'm in a warning state. Uh, those are the current conditions out there in the shop floor. And that stack light can be across many different areas. It's not just for that machine that's running, but maybe it's actually an operator, maybe it's actually material. Uh, maybe it's the overall uh, order or the overall end item. MES can also be used to help reduce setup times. You think about uh, capturing information out there on the shop floor. Without an MES system, you have no idea how much setup time is actually being accumulated for given items. Uh, here's where you can actually capture that information. And then once it's captured, you can monitor or do some analysis over that information to figure out how much setup time is being reported for individual jobs, individual work centers, or individual employees as well. So you can then look at how much time is being set up to say, you know, this is, seems to be a little bit out of whack. I need to actually you know, put some processes in place in order for me to try to reduce that time. Maybe I'm always going, you know, from one item to another item, and that, that transition between those two items is quite large, and maybe I need to change my, my planning tool. Capturing cost, uh, thinking about labor cost, obviously machine cost, scrap cost, uh, et cetera. You know, having that accurate costing information can help the business, obviously. You know, think about the value of having actual true costing. You can then have actual true accurate and true pricing of your end items. 
Um, so you know that you're making the margin that you're expecting to make or the profit that you're wanting to make. Increasing machine uptime. You think about machine uptimes, you know, one of the most key elements of most manufacturers are their machines and are they being utilized. I can say, you know, I can give you examples upon examples of different companies that we've gone out to where they think, yeah, I need a new machine, and then realize after doing some analysis about their machine utilization is that they're not utilizing their machines to their fullest capacity. So they don't really need a new machine. They just need to make sure that that machine is up and running as much time as possible throughout the day. Think about reducing waste. There's a lot of waste within manufacturers, and obviously everybody has probably gone on a lean journey at one point or another, or is still going on a lean journey today, which is saying I want to reduce waste, which is one of the biggest things in lean, right, is identify those eight or nine different types of waste and get eliminate them or, or reduce them in my business. When you think about, you know, quality is a, is a time of waste. We just talked about da machine uptime or downtime. That's a, way, that's a waste. We talk about operator utilization. We talk about productivity as far as how am I doing as far as producing items to a manufacturer. We talk about efficiency. You know, efficiency is looking at the amount of pieces completed good compared to the amount of pieces that were completed uh, poorly or scrap pieces. Um, and those are all forms of information that can be collected through an MES system as well as communicated through that MES system to other areas, which allows you to then further you know, dive into it to see if I have a, an exorbitant amount of quality issues out of my shop floor and how do I need to actually reduce those. <clears throat> Better managing inventory. Uh, tools in any uh, MES system, in fact, it's probably one of those core functions that should be uh, added out there as far as inventory. You know, inventory is a, is a big a dollar value within many manufacturing companies, and being able to manage that correctly not only gives you an ability to reduce overall cost of your business, but also planning. When you think about today's world and the supply chain that we're kind of living in, where you know, order something on Amazon today and it's on your doorstep tomorrow at noon. That's the expectation that's kind of being driven throughout the world today and being able to manage those inventories so that you have the right material on hand today to manufacture the goods that you need to manufacture today so that you can meet your on-time deliveries. Those all play a part, but also you don't want to just increase your inventory you know, on hand quantity so much that they're always there, meaning that you're carrying more cost with inventories. Uh, you obviously want to try to improve that supply chain. Some additional benefits of MES. Uh, uh, reducing cycle times, obviously eliminating the data entry, reducing work process. Let's just go through each one of these in a little more detail. Uh, you think about manufacturing cycle times, obviously the amount of time it takes to manufacture something. If you have real-time information for how long it took to manufacture something, how much downtime that uh, working process item went, meaning that it was completed at one operation or routing step and then it didn't start the next operation or routing step until two hours or two days later, that can obviously you know, give you some really good insights as far as how to reduce your overall, overall cycle time. Uh, eliminate data entry or reduce data entry. Data entry is a necessary evil, right? We want to get that information in, but data entry can come in multiple facets. I mean, you can be as simple as scanning a barcode on an item, and that could be your data entry, versus actually trying to type in the item number, the manufacturing order, the operation, the my, uh, employee ID, and everything else. So you have to enter information in, or you have to capture the information somehow. Um, so data entry is a necessary evil, I guess, if you will for uh, information to populate an MES as well as your overall business. But let's reduce and eliminate, make it simple. Um, when we think about data entry, it's not only from a human perspective of actually scanning something or entering something via a keyboard, it also could be something coming from a machine. So I could have a PLC or a sensor on a machine that is actually doing the data entry for me. Uh, you think about uh, reducing overall work and process, right? Uh, and we kind of covered this in spades a little bit already, but work in process is the amount of items you have out there. And again, how much wait time do I have between operations? Uh, what's my productivity efficiency on each one of those? Reducing paperwork. Uh, today's world, right, uh, everything's electronic. We're getting our, you know, 
bank statements and uh, other statements, bills and everything else electronically. Let's reduce paper on the shop floor. And you want to just reduce it from a cost perspective because it does have a cost perspective uh, to print out that paper and manage that paper and distribute, distribute that paper and everything else. But now you think about the other costs uh, that apply, meaning that if I have paperwork out there on the shop floor that is outdated, I'm working on the wrong revision for that engineered item. Um, I'm working on the wrong job. Uh, I have material that I'm supposed to be using, but it's not there. So that paperwork, if you reduce it now and put it into an online form, uh, everything is real time. If the engineer changes that revision of that item, everybody knows about it. If I had additional instructions or testing instructions or setup instructions or things like that, uh, everybody knows about it today. So there's value in the process of reducing paper just besides the cost of, pr of printing it. Uh, reducing lead times. Again, back to the uh, cycle, t cycle times and lead times kind of go together, right? You know, how much time is, do I need ahead of to manufacture something or purchase something from my vendors? Uh, improves product quality. You think about MES and product quality, if you're testing things throughout the manufacturing process at the point where it actually needs to be tested, your quality immediately will increase um, rather than just testing it at the end item or when the finished item is, com is completed. And this can not only just be for the uh, manufactured items on the floor, but it can also be for your, your purchased items. Um, and then, you know, taking that information and having metrics across it to say, you know, this is the number one defect that I'm receiving, or this is the number one work center that is producing the errors or, or non-conformances out there on my shop floor. You know, that goes um, a long way to improving quality, but also reducing your, um, your cost and improving your on-time delivery. Uh, eliminates lost paperwork. Uh, kind of goes hand in hand with re reducing paper, but I, you know, if I lose paperwork, what do I do with it, right? I have to reprint it and redistribute it out to the shop floor. Nobody knows what to work on. There's a lot of wasted steps in that. Uh, empowering the uh, people out on the floor to do the things that they know they need to do. Uh, this is a real critical one. You know, it's kind of at the point of entry, right? I want to empower those people to tell me what they're actually currently working on. Tell me what they've done. Communicate them to actually look at in the latest information regarding what is in front of them to manufacture. That really empowers them to actually take ownership of the task in front of them, which is obviously going to improve your, your entire company. Uh, improves the planning process and then obviously improves the entire company. You think about a planning process, right? You're planning based on what you know today. Um, so the sooner you know it, as well as the more accurate information that you have, the better your plan will become. You think about uh, when I'm actually wanting to purchase items. If I have a manufacturing process out there and I'm consuming items at the time the finished item is reported complete, I do not know my true on-hand inventory until that item is reported complete. So now if you're running your planning engine, it's going to think you have more material on hand than what you really do have on hand. And likewise, if you go the other spectrum, if I actually consume or relieve all inventory when the order is released on the front end, it's going to look like you don't have inventory, so your planning engine is obviously going to say, oh, I need to buy more. So uh, the accurate information and real-time information for not only what is uh, available for raw material and sub assemble items, as well as finished goods, but also the steps of the manufacturing process, it can greatly improve your whole planning process. And then just as a summary, obviously, the, the company as a whole is improved by knowing this information in real time, and more importantly, having it accurate. Let's take a look now at paperless here. And how does paperless accomplish a lot of the benefits and the functions that we just talked about, right? Um, and in the paperless world, you know, let's take a look at maybe just uh, communicating information out to the shop floor where I've got you know, my orders out there, where I've got my entire bill material, all my routings, all my attachments for a work area or for a job. I can you know, further dive in and look at you know, the drawings or I can look at pictures of what needs to be made. Or I, you can even insert a video for what is manufacturing or how to assemble something, uh, what materials to be used, how to set up a machine, uh, it's pretty much endless as far as the information that you can communicate out to the shop floor so that when they're recording stuff, they're actually recording 
uh, against what is expected. That whole process improvement out there on the shop floor is greatly, greatly improved. Next thing, let's look at maybe just the work in process and the stuff out there on the shop floor. And you have a lot of different activities and events that can happen. You know, and again, make it simple. We talk about re eliminating paper. We also talking about uh, reducing keystrokes or data entry, right? Reducing that data entry footprint. And here's where you can actually look at the jobs that are scheduled within my work center. I can actually perform a lot of different actions against any one of those jobs. And actions can be anywhere from you know, consuming the raw material that goes into that uh, order. It could be actually consuming the raw material that is consumed at that step of the manufacturing process. It also produces a dispatch list to say what should be worked on and in what order it should be worked on, giving you indicators of, you know, whether things are going well or things are going poorly. Red and green indicators are throughout the entire application. Again, giving that real-time visibility into accurate information out there on the shop floor. Um, there's a ton of different action buttons that can be taken from a labor perspective, a material perspective, a um, quality perspective, uh, Kanban and inventory management, transferring material from uh, location to location. Uh, a lot of alerts and notifications can be sent in as well to say that I'm actually ahead of schedule, I'm behind schedule, I, I'm looking at parts and I don't have the parts available, uh, things I covered before, but just to uh, accentuate them here a little bit, you think about all the recording, you know, the quantities, the labor, the people who worked on it, the um, uh, quality tests that were reported, all of those pieces are things that you would enter in through, you know, this is just one version of a paperless screen that you can you know, use to in not only share the information for what needs to be worked on, but also input the information for what was actually accomplished out there on the shop floor. Tons of you know different uh, benefits here from a supervisor, administrator, plant manager, you know, um, customer service, sales, whoever you want to give access and authority to, to go and look at activity out there on the shop floor. You know, you have the touchscreen kind of uh, UI for the operators on the floor that could use it that way or through a scanner. You also have a uh, browser navigation from a supervisor, a manager's level, where they can actually go in and look at manufacturing order information and look at real-time statuses for how long or how far along in the process I am against any given manufacturing order, drill into the details to look at all the operations and see the statuses and progress within each operation. You can drill into different bill of materials to say what is available, what has been consumed, what's required for this order as well as this operation step. Uh, many different inquiries into information within Paperless can give you insight into how your manufacturing process is going out there on the shop floor. Looking at you know different types of Kanbans, obviously you know red and green and yellow speak volumes for anybody on the floor. Red's obviously a, a critical or, or a bad state, and green is a good state. Uh, you'd love it for everything to be green, but we all know that in any manufacturing facility you have the reds pop up, and that's fine. It's just how fast can you react to that red situation? Uh, in this example on my screen here, I'm looking at an inventory situation where item number 1,000 is actually uh, in jeopardy of starving a work area of material. Uh, so that's where you want to react to those things quickly. You know, anything that is red or yellow, you'd like to be able to react to it right now so that you can keep your machines, your people uh, uh, working on the jobs that they need to work on as well as ultimately completing that item on the expected due date so it can be shipped and delivered to your customer on time. So all these things that we're talking about play up into that like overall uh, equipment effectiveness, your on-time delivery, your overall cost of your item, um, that manufacturing execution system gives you insight into the problems real time right now so you can correct them and improve your on-time delivery, et cetera. Another example is just like looking at maybe uh, things that may pop up. There's a lot of different analyzers and charts out there for, for material. I drilled into one of the items that was controlled through a Kanban methodology and realizing that I have 
revolved through my first three containers quite frequently, but I never revolved through my second two containers. Just an indicator to maybe the material manager saying that, you know what, uh, we've improved our supply chain or maybe our demand has gone down, that we never get to those last two containers. And that may be okay because that's a safety stock I want to keep on hand, or maybe that's a sign that I'm carrying more inventory than what I really need to carry, and I can start to reduce the inventory on hand uh, uh, right now to obviously improve my bottom line. Uh, I was at a, recently I was in uh, Illinois for a uh, visiting a, a customer and one of their drivers for 2020 was to reduce inventory by two two million dollars. Now you think about that, right? Obviously two million dollars. That means they have, you know, done some analysis internally that says we are, have more than two million dollars of extra inventory on hand. How can we deplete this? If you think about what that does for your bottom line, it's just, it's, it's incredible, right? So they're using tools like an MES solution to help them identify that they have an excess amount of inventory, but then further drilling into it to say, you know, what items are specifically targeted to say, let's reduce these. And again, those could be any type of item. They could be the, your purchased items, they could be your components, uh, excuse me, your uh, sub-assembled items, things you make to stock and you want to keep on the shelf for further um, items down the line. Uh, it could be your on-hand uh, finished goods inventory, a combination, but it helps you drill in to figure out which items you're actually carrying more of and you can drive that cost down. There's a lot of different alerts and notifications. You can think about how do you do these things, right? You know, how do I communicate to somebody? We, have, we showed you the red and green and yellow, and that's great if somebody's looking on the screen. But if somebody's not looking on the screen, I'd like to be able to send a message to them in a fashion that says, hey, we have a critical situation. There's a notification on Work Center 123 that this job is running you know, behind schedule, lower than its expected run rate. It's not going to be completed based on its uh, expected due date. Uh, that's a just one type of alert notification. I could have another one for material, You know that I do not have the material in stock or in the location that I'm expecting it. Uh, by the time I need it. So I need to notify somebody that material is not here in this given location so that I can get it there before the actual job needs to be worked on. Again, helping you reduce a lot of those wastes that are in any manufacturing process. You know, wait time, setup time, you know, material, machine, employees, etc. There's different types of dashboards and things like that that can be presented inside of paperless as well. You know, think about a big monitor above a work area that says, you know what, this is the job you're working on in this work center. Uh, you've been running it for an hour and nine minutes. I've expected three pieces, but no pieces have actually been recorded yet. Um, you obviously can show scrap there as well, but just tell, tell me what that tells to a supervisor or as well to the operator as they're looking at that monitor above their work area saying, you know what, I should have completed three pieces by now and I haven't really completed any. So it's almost a self-managing type of tool that they're going to obviously go get the help that they need in order to, you know, get the machine back up and running, uh, get the material they need, et cetera. Uh, but it also can be communicated to supervisors. You can have other different types of dashboards out there as well that will kind of show you multiple pieces of information. You know, obviously the expected versus actual uh, downtime, if there's any machines that are currently down and how long they've been down. You can th throw up a historical chart of the downtime across a number of uh, different work centers, just to give you that visibility into what is happening out there on the shop floor. And these dashboards can be on big monitors out there on the shop floor above work areas. They could be on a supervisor's desk. They could be on a client manager's desk. Um, you know, it doesn't matter where they are. They, they are used to communicate real-time events out there on the shop floor and also give you some a little peek into where your problems are as well as historically how well you've been doing. Another example of dashboards is just, you know, many different types of charts, you know, uh, that you can have for job efficiencies and downtime and on-time completion, uh, OEE, which is overall equipment effectiveness, and you can have the different values within OEE, like availability or productivity or uh, quality, uh, because those are the individual values that really make up that OEE value. So if you know your quality is really taking a big hit, that's something you need to address today because that's obviously, there's a lot of cost that gets incurred when you have quality issues. If your availability is one that's, you know, maybe uh, the, the bad number, 
uh, that's not maybe as important because maybe you don't have the demand or you know that the machine was down for scheduled maintenance, et cetera. Uh, so there's a lot of different reasons to dive into the details of OE. But again, you can have these different dashboards show a lot of different information out there um, to help you manage your shop floor uh, better. You know, you think about why we started this uh, webinar and lunch and learn here is to understand what an MES solution is, right? How does it play within my existing uh, other systems? And what benefits do you get out of it? Because there has to be a benefit, otherwise you really shouldn't probably be using it. And as you can see here, the benefits are very large. I mean, you, you've got so many benefits that come from you know, every aspect of manufacturing, whether it's scheduling jobs, whether it's communicating what needs to be worked on a job, whether it's reporting the information in a very simple fashion, whether it is actually you know, getting alerts and notifications or indicators that I have problems out there in the shop floor. That's a huge benefit because you can react to them today rather than waiting till tomorrow's production status meeting or waiting till the end of the week or waiting till the customer gets your product and finds out there's a quality issue. So there's a lot of benefits that go into an MES solution. There's a lot of reasons that every manufacturing company should um, invoke and turn on parts of an MES solution. You don't have to turn on everything. You can turn on just different parts. You know, If you want to maybe focus on quality, you can obviously turn on quality pieces. If you want to focus on maybe getting more accurate rates and costing information, you can turn on pieces of the application to give you better values for how much uh, it costs and how long it takes to manufacture something. So think about an MES system as a bunch of different tools and functions that, that you can turn on to improve your overall business. Uh, that's it for this presentation. I'll open it up for any questions. Um, and I'll read my chat box here to see if there's any questions. Um, and you can, if you want, you can just put those uh, in the uh, questions area. I'll give it a minute or two. As always, uh, you can you know submit uh, your questions to uh, Paperless as well. You can go to our website at paperlessllc.com or Information Systems Engineering, uh, which is ise-erp.com. All right, thank you very much, everyone, for attending. Uh, we will uh, put this broadcast out on our website, so if you want to download it and view it at a later time or send it off to maybe some of your coworkers, that's fine as well. Have a great day.